G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Wednesday afternoon here in Australia, market has gone down again, 4.2%. We got so close to that 2 point sort of $5 trillion mark. I mean, not so close, but we're getting up there. And we have been rejected again. Bitcoin dominance still just sits around that kind of 39-40% range. There's definitely been some volume though, so the dip has been bought. But again, we've been seeing this for a while. We do, yeah, we're stuck in a range at the moment and we're still waiting to see what Bitcoin's gonna do. Is it gonna break out and go higher? Is it gonna dump and go lower? Or look, could we just be in a massive sideways accumulation for months and months and months to try and bore people out of the market? That is something that we need to consider. Again, Bitcoin now under 48,000, so 47,812, quite a big dump. ETH gas price has gone through the roof, so people are panicking, buying in, buying into coins, getting out of coins, doing all sorts of stuff. But you know, we got down to three dollars something, and that was the cheapest I'd seen gas prices in quite some time. So it is a very scared market at the moment. And look, again, number one, I'm never going to offer you financial advice because I'm not a financial advisor, and I don't consider myself to be an expert. But I've been around for a while, and this is what a scared market is. And we do continually kind of, you know, set in some lower lows, but we breached out of that and we'll get onto the Bitcoin chart soon. Because if you want to know what cryptocurrency is going to do, follow Bitcoin. If you want to know what Bitcoin's going to do, have a look at other markets because they still, the correlation is there. No matter what anyone tries to tell you, if the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones and things like that aren't doing well, Bitcoin will follow. It's just a matter of when. It can outpace it for a while. Like you can have the S&P 500 going down and the Dow Jones going down and Bitcoin going up. But if, if it's just a little move to the downside for the S&P 500 and Dow Jones, then Bitcoin can do all right. But if they continue to set in new lows, it's just a matter of time until Bitcoin follows and the cryptocurrency market then follows. Now, will that last forever? Probably not. There's probably going to be some... Uh, you know, decoupling of that. But I think in the end, all markets still kind of follow suit. So really, yeah, actually, I'm going to have to go back on that. No, I don't think that's going to change. I think they're going to stay the same. They may be more correlated uh, in the future because that's just the way it is, particularly the S&P 500. If that's doing well, other markets can do well. If that is not doing well, and again, having big dips down, every other market follows suit. That's just the way it goes. But the S&P 500 can have you know, a down day or two and other markets still do all right. But if the S&P 500 has big moves down, you can guarantee the other markets will follow. It's just a matter of time. So keep that in mind. All right, again, we can see, look, market's down 4.2% overall. So things aren't looking great. We've had some pretty big dips. But what's done well? Has anything done well in the last 24 hours? All right, there we go. IOTA up 12%, Rose Oasis Network up 9%, Phantom up 6%, BitTorrent 3%. So we got a couple of movers, but look, not too much. And really only, you know, I'd say kind of two okay movers. 6% is still nice, but you know, it's 6% in crypto. <laughs> That's not really much. So really these two kind of double digit movers, they're quite nice. Everything else is just, you know, you, you'll take it over a loss, but it's nothing crazy. Now, unfortunately, we've got to look at what the majority of the market has done. So, boom, Olympus Dow got hit quite hard. Icon Aave got hit quite hard. Again, that's you know, that's the markets. But I do have some bullish news for Aave, but it doesn't mean that the price is going to skyrocket. And I'll get onto that very, very shortly. Zcash, Ravencoin, Algorand, I mean, you name it. There's lots of losses here and, you know, some double-digit losses, particularly Olympus uh, that really hurts that 15%. That's where, for me, 15 plus percent gain is great and 15 plus percent loss really hurts. Anything sort of below those numbers is, you know, not so bad in the gain side uh, and in the losses, you'd never want to loss. But that's something you got to remember that this market is, yeah, it's super volatile. So if you've been in crypto for a while, you know, then you're probably going to be okay. If you haven't been in crypto for too long, like less than a year, you're probably going to struggle with it, particularly if we start to see some really big dumps. And, and we're going to have a look at those very, very shortly. All right, so, you know, a couple of losses, uh, sorry, a couple of gains, uh, but quite a number of losses. Now let's go to the Bitcoin chart and see what uh, we can see over here. 
So here, we had that breakout. Now, as I suspected, well, not so much suspected, but at least I did say, we need to see this come and bounce off this line. Now, we've dipped back into this downwards trending sort of channel here. And now, we're using this downwards trending line as resistance. We're not using it as support. I wanted to see this maybe come down, bounce off it. But again, this line isn't exact. You could move it around a little bit. Uh, so we're waiting to see what's going to happen here. Are we going to bounce back up or are we going to start to fall down even lower and again come down to these $42,000 marks? But downwards, uh, sorry, down, down trending channels like this, they are actually bullish. It's just you got to find out is it going to break halfway or way down the bottom? And I, I reckon if you stretch these lines out, you're starting to get down to this $30,000 range. Now, it doesn't mean it has to follow it all the way down to here, but I think the point of this actually would end up somewhere down around about here. I don't think it would be too far off. So there is that CME gap down there, so just keep that in mind. And again, I am wondering if we get a SEC spot Bitcoin approval somewhere around about here. Now, does that mean it's happening in February? No, uh, it could be much longer, but I just... I'm keeping an eye out for this, but again, these are the levels. So for me, I got my buy order in at about $42,500 for Bitcoin because we might not make it down here. And if we don't, that's fine. But if we do, I'm buying some, but it is just some. And then I've got another buy in order just around about here. So 37,000 sort of 500, just above it in case we just get a little flash wick down into here. But if we don't, then it's all good. But if we continue to go lower, I want to make sure I've got money. I've already made the mistake, and I did mention this the other day, that I was just too aggressively buying. I didn't have enough cash sitting on the side, so I have had to change up what I've done. I now have a minimum 10% uh, in cash at all times, and my sort of weekly fortnightly money that I DCA with, I am putting 20% of that into cash all the time. And I mean all the time. Every single time, 20% goes into cash. And it's not because I love cash. It's because I want to make sure that I will have cash to buy the dips. Then, with what's left over, 30% goes into Bitcoin pretty much all the time. Particularly if Bitcoin's not a new all-time highs. I'm happy to just continually buy Bitcoin. Another 20% of the cash that I have, not the cash that I have on the side, the cash that I bring in every fortnight or week to buy, 20% goes into Ethereum. I will up that to 25% Ethereum, 25% Bitcoin once I see ETH 2.0 roll out and it's all good. I think it will do that, but until it does, I'm just not as convinced by Ethereum uh, as I am Bitcoin. And then with the other 50% of the cash that I'm willing to spend, I am simply going through the charts and having a look at projects that I like and setting in buy orders. I'm not just immediately buying, I am setting in buy orders because I want to see if the price will come down and match that. If, if it doesn't, then that's fine. It just means I've got more cash to buy at another time. But at the moment, with the downtrend, I'm just setting in lots of buy orders uh, for a number of things. And if they don't ever hit, then it's fine. Again, I've still got a good bag of lots of things, and I can look, uh, go and change that at any old stage and just look for the projects that are down the most. So that's what I'm looking for, all right? And again, this still could play out. I'm not saying it will. I never offer your financial advice, but it's just something that I'm looking at, and I still think there's a good chance that we're going to get down into here. I, I think that's... Oh. God, if I had to go percentages, I still think there's probably a good 60% chance that we come down to here. But that doesn't mean we are. I've been wrong many times about many things. But overall, I'm generally doing all right. But again, you got to do you. Don't simply listen to me and do what I'm doing because I'm doing it and you think that I know everything. I absolutely do not. But I've done okay so far. So, you know, copy me at your own peril is what I will say. All right. Now I'm going to move on to this because we know what are uh, the big we know where I think the bitcoin could go. DeFi sector tokens offer shelter as bitcoin falls below 48,000 48 and a half thousand dollars. I said this before, don't, you know, everyone got very quiet on DeFi other than kind of Terra Luna which is a bit of a DeFi play uh, and you know Avalanche the token itself but the actual DeFi projects people were going to sleep on them and I have said one of my hypotheses hypotheses, sorry, is that if the market starts to go into a legit bear market, I think DeFi will do well. 
because it means everyone's bought enough and they and now they're all starting to sell and take profits because they get in a bit of a panic and they still want to get and get they're still sorry excuse me they're still going to want to get yield they can't get the growth in the market because the market's got to its peak so they will go looking for DeFi. i think if DeFi is pumping and doing really well that's the sign that you're probably in a bit of a bearish trend if not a bear market and then eventually when it gets to the bottom I think DeFi will then start to turn, you know, start to have a downturn because people will be taking the yield that they made from there and starting to go looking for new projects to get that growth. Now, whether they do that in the crypto markets or the traditional markets, who knows? But that is a thesis that I have. That's one of my hypotheses. Is hypotheses? Sorry, is that if DeFi is pumping? probably in a bit of a bearish trend i think DeFi will still always do all right there's always going to be people having money in DeFi, particularly when they can offer you know anywhere from kind of two to four to ten to fifteen percent who knows you know the higher you go the more risky it is so i think people will always be looking for that because the banks simply can't they cannot match that at the moment and again there's stories that we can look at that i believe the banks they are coming to DeFi. they are going to get on the back of it because it is just it's a process that works and I've given you some clues or not even clues I've told you some of the DeFi plays that I like but we'll have a look at one of those Aave now they are releasing a new market so Aave's newest market is actually using real world assets so Aave users can now earn yield by helping small businesses tap liquidity from the frothy crypto markets thanks to a new partnership with Centrifuge now what does Centrifuge do? Right, Centrifuge is a crypto company that lets businesses tokenize aspects of their operations, such as trade receivables and invoices. Once tokenized, these assets can be used as collateral to borrow cash. Now there's more. With today's launch of RWAs on Aave, another seven permission markets have opened up. Permissioned in this context means that interest, interested users complete know your customers uh, processing before joining. So again, this is that Aave Arc stuff. It was originally going to be called Aave Pro. This is where the big business is going to come. They have to abide by this stuff. And that is where we're going to get the mass adoption. Now that doesn't mean that Aave is suddenly going to get mass adoption and it doesn't even mean Aave's price is going to go up in the immediate future. It could still go down and we'll speak about that shortly. But here, not only does this initiative offer lenders more markets to earn interest on their holdings, but it will also provide the businesses behind each of these markets to access liquidity they may not have had access to traditionally. So I think this is super bullish for Aave. Uh, I'm happy to continue to buy Aave, but I'm not, you know, I've already got a decent position in Aave, and I definitely think Aave's price could go down. But the more stories I read like this, the more bullish I am about Aave in the long term. Not necessarily the short term, short term and not necessarily in its price action. We can definitely go lower, and we're going to have a look at that. But I am bullish about Aave being one of the flagships of DeFi going forward but there's no guarantees. Please don't rush out and say, all right, well, you're saying buy Aave now. No, no, I'm saying I'm happy to buy Aave now. Bits and pieces of it. And again, I've got my buy orders in to see if it'll go down. If it doesn't go down, then it's all good. I've got a good bag. But if it does continue to go down, then I'm just going to chip away at it. But I'm not focusing on many altcoins at the moment at all because I am still worried that the market's going much lower and we'll get into that uh, again. But let's have a look at Aave. We can see Aave got to a top of nearly $700. What was that? $690. This is where I think we could go down to in a bear market. A 90-ish percent retracement. Again, marrying up with basically something like this, these marks down here. So I think it's possible you might see a $50 Aave at some time. I'm not saying it's going to do that. I'm just saying it wouldn't surprise me. But levels I'm looking at is we can see we bounced off this, we got rejected by it, and so we could be going lower. So for me, I'd really start having some buy orders set in for Aave at around about the 200-ish dollar mark, thereabouts. But I'm not backing up the truck and throwing everything at it because I think it still could go lower. I'm not saying it will. Then my next buy order is down at $160. Then my next buy order is going to be somewhere down around about here, around $120. Then I'm going to have buy orders set in down here at around about 
Can you see what I'm doing? I'm just finding places where they've had some support and resistance, and I'm just going to put buy orders in there. If they get filled, great. I've got it much cheaper than its old all-time high. If it just goes to the moon from here, then so be it. I've already got a good position in Aave. But I like Aave. It's something I'm going to hold long-term. And if it doesn't work out, I haven't thrown everything at it. I put most of my money into Bitcoin, then followed by Ethereum, then followed by you know some other good projects that I like, like Matic. I think that's got long-term value. But again, the only things that I'm really buying at the moment is Bitcoin and Ethereum. And I am mostly focusing on cash at the moment until I see a change in the market. Because until that comes, I don't want to just throw all my money at something that may drop 90%. Currently, you know, Aave is sitting at what? 250 and I think it could go down to $50. That's going to hurt if I throw everything at it. But if it turns out to be wrong and it goes to the moon, then happy days. But keep this in mind. I do think if we are in a bear market, and we could be, no, no one knows for sure, and no one ever will know, it's always something you see in hindsight, I think you could see Aave down around the $50 mark. No guarantees it gets there, probably going to get shut off somewhere around here. Uh, a, a lot of buying will probably happen around this range if we're in a bear market. All right, Aave against ETH. I spoke about this before. We set in a new low, and now it looks like we're using this as support. But it's all based on what the market does. Bitcoin, if Bitcoin, you know, excuse the language, but shits the bed and goes south, then this can definitely start to set in new lows. But again, it's risk to a reward. The risk is, yep, yeah, maybe we're going to go down lower. Hence why I'm not throwing everything at it. But the reward is if I buy a little bit here and it does something like this, well, that's pretty amazing. I'll have made some pretty good profits. Harve against Bitcoin. Again, we bounce down here. Look, old resistance can become support. We broke down just below it, but then we came back, basically bounced off it, and now it's made its way up. But again, what happens if Bitcoin's going lower? Then all this is going to probably come back down to here. And that's the truth of it. So don't go rushing out buying altcoins unless you are literally in it for the long haul. You've done your research and you're solid on the team the tokenomics you know everything that it's doing because when the downside comes it can be super brutal now again if you've been in this space for a while i don't need to harp on about that to you but most people sort of coming into this space are a little bit new and it's really easy to get wrecked that's why i had to realign my portfolio and make sure that i had 10 percent in cash because i had much less i'd be lucky if i had one percent in cash and I'm, make, I'm going to make sure that I never sort of breach that again unless I feel like we really are at some crazy low bottom, you know, like March 2020, the crash of everything. Something like that, I'll probably deploy a whole lot of cash into that. But it won't be more than 50% of whatever cash I have in case I'm wrong and it goes lower. All right. Now I want to show you something that can be a little bit scary. The reason I am concerned, Bitcoin, if 69,000 was the top, we get down to this last, what is it, CME gap that hasn't been filled. I mean, there are a couple lower. They're literally down into the hundreds of dollars, I think. That means Bitcoin could go down to about $9,500. These are the CME gaps that haven't been filled. So 9500 Eighteen and a half thousand, twenty-three. You know, let's say twenty-four thousand, and then thirty-two and a half thousand dollars. So, if this was the top, and Bitcoin gets a you know ninety, eighty percent retracement, which it has seen in many other bear markets, I think that could bring us down to here. So that's the scary side, ladies and gentlemen. Hence, why I'm not throwing all my money at everything just yet. I think this is likely. No, actually, I don't know about likely. 50-50, oh, I think we could come down to here. But the scary part is, if we make it down to here, then the ch chances increase that we're coming down to here. Now, a lot of people are saying that this is kind of you know a double thing and then we're going to go up to the top. If that's the case, I don't think this will ever get filled because it is below the old all-time high. But if we are in a bear market and that was the top, then I think it's pretty good chance that this will get filled. But I get the feeling like a lot of buying will start to happen around here. Now, it doesn't mean the price can't go lower, 
but then I'd start to have a look at here. Find your CME gaps. Find old places where once there was a lot of sort of support and resistance, particularly sort of down here. Again, that $30,000 range, that's looking like a pretty good place to put in a buy order because we may break through this, come down and sort of touch 30000 and then boom, shoot back up. But again, the thing is, once we do come down here, it also increases the chances that maybe we're coming down to here. All right, last but not least, DeFi portfolio tracking firm DeBank raises $25 million in round led by Sequoia from China. Don't sleep on DeFi, ladies and gentlemen, and particularly when it's gotten so quiet. Now, again, I'm not saying rush out and buy every DeFi token you can. I'm just saying start to look at it because it's been so quiet. This is not a bad place to, again, just chip away at it. And if it drops, you've only chipped away at it. But if it pumps, then you've got a position in it. You want to try and find the markets that no one is investing in because that's where the exponential stuff will be found. Other people say, no, you've got to get on, you know, uh, uh, get on the trends. Yeah, you can ride the trends, but unfortunately, they're usually already at breakout points and the chances of them coming back are more likely. You find something, again, like DeFi will never go away. Which DeFi projects are going to last 10, 15, 20 years? Who knows? I couldn't tell you. I like Aave. That's my number one pick. But DeFi itself is the future. It's not going anywhere. If you can find the good DeFi projects, when no one else is talking about them and everyone else has forgotten about them, whatever price that is, it won't matter if it's at $10 or $100 or $2. If that's the price it is, when everyone else has forgotten about it, once everybody else finally does come back to it, it's most likely gone up a fair bit from there already and then it's going to go exponential. So that is getting on the front foot. Now, I don't know if DeFi is going to be the next area to pump. Something else could be. But what I do know is DeFi has been very quiet for a while. Hence why I'm going to put some more dollars into DeFi. Just not a lot because I'm still worried that we have a whole lot further to go down. And we may well be in a bear market. I don't think we are. That's not my personal opinion. And again, I never offer you financial advice. But now you know exactly what I'm thinking. And I want all my viewers to know exactly my thoughts. You know, Again, I'm, I'm just constantly trying to come up with things where I think the market could go both to the upside and to the downside. Because if you're only focused on this is just going up, guess what? It's probably going to go down and you're going to get wrecked. And vice versa, if you think it's only going down, it's probably going to go up and you're going to miss out of, on a whole lot of opportunities. So I try and plan for both. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that game train at the moment, unfortunately, but that's life, and I'll see you next time.